fabulous lunch. For those of you who are not fortunate enough to attend, you might want to rethink your schedule for uh, uh, the weeks ahead because um, the dining experience is to be, um, how would I say it? to be repeated um, for the next four weeks, and uh, you'll never be disappointed. I bet I can guarantee you. And um, this is, we're at 900 Main Street in Brockton, the first Lutheran church, okay? And um, I'm welcoming one of the greatest nonprofits that exists in this region because it recognizes the need for services and provides them at several different levels. And it's celebrating 50 years. I'm talking about the Old Colony Elder Council, otherwise known as OCES, okay? And uh, today we have Alisa here, and she's the head of programs for you know, the, um, the whole operation. And I cannot tell you enough how much they can assist you through various challenges that should arise in your, um, how would I say it, um, as one grows older or one has physical challenges and unfortunately some rather sensitive situations such as elder abuse and uh, death um, of those uh, el el elderly and um, recognize at this point too that the State House has five bills um, in the House, and um, they are hopefully, they will be mentioned just briefly, and we cannot emphasize this enough. The laws are made to protect you, and um, this is a vital time, and of course I'm somewhat biased because um, I'm over 65, just by a little bit, and um, since we are holding up the population of the US, we <laughs> deserve to be treated um, but no, in all seriousness, uh, this is a vital time for many individuals, and this is an opportunity to hear this. Please spread the word, and you will get a lot more you know, positive explanation here. But also remember that these Lenten luncheons are open to the public, and uh, next week we're going to have uh, a gentleman, a specialist, entomologist here, on insects, and he's going to talk about ticks and other insect-borne diseases. And uh, the reality that, you know, if you have a dog, you have a, a yard, you go outdoors, that it's possible for you to prevent yourself from, you know, how would I say, acquiring these diseases. We have what, a little white um, entertainment with Broadway Musical, uh, a gentleman that wrote a book, A Word of Day, and we also have another um, service, and once again, provided uh, for individuals at all levels, for all entities, and this is, um, the Greater Broughton um, Dispute Mediation and Dispute Resolution. Okay, and so without further ado, please, I'll let this wonderful little Mark Cole woman come up here. Thank you, it's nice to see you all. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, I tend to talk a little fast, so if I'm talking too fast, just, I don't know, give me some, yeah, give me some, a nice to get to the top of the um, so thank you to Anne. I'm here to talk about Old Colony Elder Services, or OCES, um, and really I'm going to give a presentation on everything that we have to offer. Um, I always like to do this when I do community outreach and really see how many people have heard of OCES. Show of hands. About half of you. How many people work with OCES in some capacity? Okay. So way less than half, right? Um, so I think one of the major things that when we start these presentations is to make people aware that we exist and really try our best to emphasize the importance of what we like to say, knowing us before you need us. So I recognize, right, um, in the best way that I can, that the aging process can be delicate and nuanced and that with the aging process, there's some loss of independence and some struggles that come with it. And what we see often is individuals waiting because they're trying to hold on to that independence as long as they can. And I think there's a, an assumption that 
putting us in place, and I'll talk about what we do in a minute, but putting us in place makes that process happen quicker, when really it's the opposite. Our whole goal is to help people age in place. We're a community-based organization. We want you to remain at home and in the community as long as you possibly can. So we really support independence. Our mission statement, we support the independence and dignity of aging adults. So really our role is to make sure that you maintain that independence as long as possible. Um, so we do that in a, a lots of different ways. Um, primarily, we do what's called home care services. That's our kind of primary uh, source of, of service that we put in the community. That can range depending on the individual and their needs. Uh, we have individuals who just get a grocery shopper who comes out and does their grocery shopping once a week. And then we have individuals who get 24-hour home health aid level of care. So it really, when I say there's a range, there's a big range of needs, right, in between those two ends. Um, in between that, you know, the grocery shopping is, is one thing. Then someone might move and say, you know what, I've gotten the grocery shopping. Now I'm interested in someone maybe helping with some light housekeeping. So that, okay, great. We'll increase your services so you can get the light housekeeping. Then someone might say, you know what, I realize that I'm having kind of a difficult time um, getting my shoes on in the morning or putting my coat on independently. Okay, great, let's get someone in for an hour in the morning to help you get ready, right? Or an hour in the evening to help you get ready for bed. Okay, now I'm realizing that I'm having some struggles in the shower. Okay, great, let's put in a home health aid and help you, you know, get in and out of the shower. <coughs> now I'm having trouble while I'm actually in the shower. Okay, let's increase that and help someone, you know, so you can kind of see the process. And which is why we say that know us before you need us is so important because when we're in there, it's just a, it's just a progression, right? The progression happens and we're there to support you through that progression. Um, so we offer the homemaking services, which is the grocery shopping, light housekeeping. Um, we also offer chore services. So that's gonna be a step up from light housekeeping. That's for people that might have a heavy duty cleaning that needs to be done. Um, a lot of times in those we see hoarding cases. So those are individuals that really, their houses are you know, overcrowded for whatever the reason is. Um, and we work with them to either clean out or put in some services to help get their house in you know, a safer space for them. Um, we have a home health aid level of care, which includes the, the dressing and the bathing and you know, the, anything that's involved with kind of uh, grooming, anything involved with daily living in that way. Um, and then we offer supportive home care aid, which is essentially a person that can do all of the things I just discussed, but they specialize in individuals who might be struggling with some behavioral health needs or individuals that have a dementia or Alzheimer's diagnosis who might need someone who has specialized training, um, and they, they can come in and help. One thing to note is these aren't people, some of them are, but these aren't people that live alone that need our services. These are people who might still be living life independently and just need some support in the areas I talked about. They might live with a spouse, they might live with family. We, we are in all sorts of homes. These aren't people that are homebound and, and getting our services. It's, it's a range of individuals. We certainly have people you know, that are homebound and need our services, but we work with families you know, beyond that as well. Any, I, I like to pause for questions in between because I talk about a lot of things and I want people to have the opportunity. Um, any questions about the home care services that I just discussed? Yeah, so that's a great question. So OCES is what's called an ASAP, an Aging Service Access Point. A trick question. Anyone heard of ASAPs before? No, that's right. That's, that's what I figured. So the really great thing about Massachusetts is that every city and town is covered by an ASAP. So anywhere you live in Massachusetts, you can get an ASAP to come in and do exactly what we do. There are 23 of us in the state, and again, every city and town you live in is covered by one. We're overseen by the Executive Office of Elder Affairs, so it's a state-run program at the highest level, and then each, indiv each individual ASAP has the opportunity to kind of develop you know, as they see fit. We cover Brockton, Greater Brockton, so Avon, Easton, um, and then we cover down to before the bridge in Buzzards Bay. 
so Plymouth and Greater Plymouth as well. We have 24 cities and towns that we cover. Um, we're one of the biggest ASAPs in the state that, that cover our catchment area is one of the biggest. But it is important to know anywhere that you live. So in Attleboro, Bristol Elder Services would be the one that you contact. If you live Martha's Vineyard, Cape and the Island Elder Services would be the one. So there are 23 of us that do exactly the same in the state, no matter where you are. Yes? Is there one in Rockland? Yes, we cover Rockland. Yep. Yep. Other questions? Go ahead. Is it covered by uh, insurance? insurance? Sure, great question. So the question was, does it is it covered by insurance? So it's a state run program, the home care program. So there's the that answer is kind of twofold. Um, the short answer is no, it's a sliding fee scale. What that means is it's a copay system. <clears throat> so the copays are based on individuals' incomes and it works just like the doctor's office. So as you all probably know, if you're at the doctor for three minutes or if you're at the doctor for two hours, your copay is the same. That's how our system works as well. If you get one hour services or you get 24 hour services, your copay is the same. So it's, it's a sliding fee scale dependent on income. I will say, and this is, I'm, this is not just lip service when I say this, our job is to help people. If an individual on paper fits somewhere and they cannot afford that copay, we work with them. We're never going to say no to someone based on the fact that they cannot afford our services. That's not how we operate as an agency. So we do an adjustment of the copay, or we talk about other options like getting on Mass Health or helping someone navigate the process so that the, the services are affordable to them. The copay, the copays range. Some people pay ten dollars a month for all their services. Some people pay over a hundred. It just depends. Um, but the copays are never going to be these huge dollar amounts um, that someone can't afford. What's the age bracket? Yep, so we service, uh, the home care program is 60 and older. Unless an individual is diagnosed with an Alzheimer's or dementia, um, then we can service them as well under 60 for someone with like an early onset diagnosis. Um, we have other programs that service individuals under 60 as well. Um, and I'll talk about some of those in a minute. Um, but the home care program, kind of what I was just describing, is going to be 60 and older. Um, if people are enrolled in what are called the SCO, has anyone heard of SCOs? No? Okay. So SCOs are, it's, a, it's called Senior Care Option. It's a, um, it's a specific insurance plan that some insurance companies work with, and it's a wraparound to MassHealth. So if you're not on MassHealth, you probably haven't heard of it. Um, it's for individuals that are on MassHealth, and they can also get, say, Tufts, as a secondary and be in the SCO program. So we also have everything I just described, we have through the SCO program, and that's gonna be a zero dollar copay because it's covered um, with the insurance or by MassHealth. And it's also important to mention that if all of this sounds like a foreign language, which some of it probably does, it's our job to help you navigate that system. So when people come to us and they're like, I know I need services, I'm not really sure what to do, we identify the best option and work with you to say, well, based on your income, you could qualify for this, or you could qualify for that, and, and work with you to make sure that you're in the best place um, for the services. Other questions? If you're on Mass Health and you don't know about schools, um, how does one find out what is a birth? Yeah, so just like any other insurance plan, SCOs have different packages, right? So um, the SCOs do their own outreach, just like, you know, they compete with each other, just like insurance does. So, you know, Tufts, for example, is going to have a different package than, say, uh, Navicare. Um, so I would say the best option is um, to either call us and talk to one of our benefit advisors who can help with that process, um, or if you, if you know a specific insurance company you're interested in working with, reaching out to them and saying, hey, I'm interested in the SCO, the SCO option. Yeah, so we can, the question was if someone's on hospice, if we can work with them. So our services are a really good wraparound to other services. Um, you probably noticed in my list, I didn't, I didn't mention any skilled nursing services. So skilled nursing services, which are going to be occupational therapy, physical therapy, 
medication management, uh, changing of wounds, G-tubes, things that you know, require more skilled hands-on care. We don't do that, but we wrap around to that. So oftentimes, if someone has high needs, we're in the home, you know, they're 24 seven, and the VNA, the visiting nurses, might come in for an hour, you know, and do what they need to do, or hospice might come in for an hour or two, do what they need to do, and we're, we're a wrap around to that. Other questions? So I'm going to spend a few minutes now just talking about the other programs that we offer. Um, our biggest programs are home care and SCO. So SCO, remember, they're just different payer sources. Home care is the state home care program, and there's the sliding fee scale. SCO is done through insurance. Each of those have about 3,500 people enrolled in them. Um, and I'll say out of our, we service about 25,000 people. Um, and I would say close to 10,000 of those are in Brockton and surrounding towns. So, you know, half of our population is in this area. Um, high needs, you know, in, in a lot of people living in a condensed area. Um, so other programs that we offer, so those are our two biggest programs and they're kind of the front door for people. They call and they say, I don't know what I'm looking for, but home care is typically where they end up. And then from there, they can they'd be linked to other services. Um, we offer a family caregiver support program, which is for individuals who are providing care for someone. So it could be a spouse, it could be a child, it could be a, a parent taking care of their child or vice versa. Um, and our family caregiver support program offers support groups, an ear to lean on, a, 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 just a person at the agency who you can connect with and say, I'm stressed out, what, what is there for me out there? and really can help navigate the caregiving process. Um, we offer uh, what's called AFC, which is Adult Family Care. This is a mass health program specifically, but it's for individuals who are living with a family member who is already taking care of them, and they want to get reimbursed for taking care of them. So this is really, we see this a lot like a son or a daughter is caring for a parent you know, they've had to either take a leave of absence from work or they've had to leave their job because they're providing this round-the-clock care. They then can get reimbursed through the state for taking care of their loved one. And the idea really, when, you, when you're totally frank about it, the idea is it costs the state less to have someone remain at home than it does to put them in a facility, right? So when you look at it from like that grim lens, right, that's kind of the lens that the state uses. We also know that quality of life is, you know, is improved beyond measure when someone is able to remain at home and in the community. So our mission is to kind of take advantage, right, of the, the services and what the state, state's motto is and keep people at home because we recognize how important it is for quality of life. You know, science shows that people that remain in the community live longer just, just by way of they're happier by remaining in the community. Questions? How long is the waiting list? We have no wait list. So we don't have a wait list currently. Um, I will say there is a national crisis for AIDS. So the AIDS are the people who actually go into the home and do like the home health aid level of care or the grocery shopping or some of those things that I talked about. We don't do that. We're, we're case management. So we connect you, we work with you, and then we contract with people in the community that actually do that work. Um, to be transparent, the A job doesn't pay well, and there's a shortage. Speaking of some of the bills that are out there, that's a huge one, is to increase rates for home health aides so that they can be recognized like they deserve to be recognized. Uh, many of them still get paid minimum wage to do extremely difficult work, um, and it's it's not fair. Okay, so there's bills on the, the at the house now to try to make sure that people get reimbursed what they deserve. Um, so I say that to say, well, we don't have a wait list. Sometimes people are waiting for services because there's no aid to go in. You're still connected with us, you still have the case management, but you might be waiting. Um, Brockton's and Brockton surrounding towns are better than a lot of places in the state. Um, there's a lot of home health aid agencies in Brockton and a lot of individuals going to them to get trained and moving their way into a home health aid position. Um, we also service Plymouth and 
Duxbury and Carver and those areas, there's the, the aid crisis is majorly felt in those areas. So this, this area, it's felt less. So people wait much less than they would if they lived you know, more towards the gate. Other questions? Yes? Do you deal with any homeless people? Yeah, so um, good segue into the next program. So we also have what's called options counseling um, and transition support. So our options counseling program uh, deals with lots of the homeless population. You know, the unfortunate news is we don't have access to any more housing than anybody does. It's not, I think people come to us and they think, okay, I need housing, and they think that we can somehow find them housing. Um, that's not the case, unfortunately. Um, but we do work with individuals. We'll help them through filling out the CHAMP application, which is the, um, the CHAMP application is the uh, like common app for housing in the state. So we'll help them through that process. We'll help them identify something like a shelter or we put people up at hotels if they're like in between housing and they have something lined up. We use grant money, we'll put them up at hotels. So it's certainly not a perfect solution, but we do have individuals that work with people who are you know, not sure where, where they're gonna land. Um, and options counseling also works with lots of individuals who are just like, I'm not sure what's next. You know, I, I live alone right now and I, I'm not sure if I wanna keep my house. I'm not sure, I might wanna go into an assisted living. I might wanna find a place with a pool. You know, I don't know where I wanna end up. And our options counselors are really, it's a short term service, but they really just connect with people and they say, tell me what you're looking for. Here's all the resources, you know, and, and you can, Take what I give you and hopefully that will help you in your next steps. Um, and then our transition support program works with individuals who are um, in a skilled, skilled nursing facility, so a nursing home, level of care, who are looking to transition back to the community. So the nursing facilities in the area will contact us and they'll say, I have an individual who's looking to you know, transition back into the community, um, can you come work with them? And we'll help find housing if that's part of it or get them goods, like lots of people, they might have been healthy and then they broke their hip and then they went into rehab and then they're returning to the community and now they need a commode or they need shower, you know, they need some adaptable equipment in the shower, maybe they need a ramp. Our transition support program helps navigate that process and connects people with the appropriate resources to get them set up to transition home appropriately. Other questions? Yes. On the transition and, and, and transportation issues, can you mention Yeah, that? so transportation is, is an issue. And it's an issue that um, is statewide. And you know, we, we're a part of a lot of um, community co coalitions. And this is always something that comes up is, tra is transportation. So if someone's enrolled with us and they're in our programs, they have a care plan. And transportation can be included in their care plan if they need transportation for, uh, as it's defined, a life-sustaining illness, chemo, dialysis, something that they, you know, they, they need to routinely get to the doctors in order to receive treatment. On the flip side of that, if someone just needs rides to the doctors as one-off, we can also do that if we have an appropriate kind of you know, awareness. People need to be enrolled in our programs in order to access that. We do offer like one time only as we call them. So someone called today and they say, I always have transportation on my appointment, but my daughter's away and I really have this doctor's appointment, I need to get to it. We can use grant money and work with one of our providers who, who does transportation and transport someone to a doctor's appointment as like a one time only. Um, but anyone that's enrolled in one of our programs can access our transportation services more ongoing. Other questions? Yes. Illegal immigrants? Yeah, so we work with anyone. We're, we're not, you know, there's no, there's no barriers to what we provide. Um, really the only, they have to qualify clinically for the services and the way we qualify people is that they have a, a, what's called a critical unmet need. And that can be, I can't go grocery shopping. You know, I need food to survive and I can't do it. Then they qualify. Um, so we have, we have no barriers to the individuals that we can service. There's, there's certainly barriers to them accessing mass health or other benefits, um, but as far as we're concerned, there's no barrier to services. So if they're living in motels or hotels, you can go there? Yeah, yeah, and you know, we, we look at it as we want to identify all the needs, so most likely we're also helping them navigate the system to 
make other referrals or get them more permanent housing. But we do have people who are in a hotel and motel who, who get like a home health level of care. Yeah. Is there a language uh, It depends. Our staff, um, I was talking about this earlier, we have 255 staff and um, almost 100 of them are from Brockton and many of them speak um, Haitian and Creole, uh, Haitian and uh, Cape Breton Creole, which you know are the two largest uh, languages here in this area. Um, and then we access a translation service as needed. Some of the aides certainly have, you know, they speak different languages or they have English as a second language. Um, we don't, we don't consider that unless it has to be considered, right? Because if, if someone is able to communicate enough to meet, meet the needs of the individual, then we're going to send them in the home to do just that. If the language barrier becomes an issue, then we can talk about it and put somebody where that's, that's you know, not a barrier. <laughs> I know you're getting ready to do the wind down, but there's two things I want people to know sure. about that you guys provide. Because to me, it's just so horrible when I hear these stories. When, how would I say it, someone is not capable as much anymore to handle their finances. Yep. And they're either paying bills to people they don't owe money to, or they're being, how would I say, taken advantage of. Yep. And naturally, unfortunately, what makes the news, and every year you have your rally, mm -hmm with the elder abuse. And please give your phone number. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have a protective service department. Um, and protective services, their job is to investigate abuse and neglect within the older adult population. So we get reports daily, you know, for abuse and neglect. That can include self-neglect. Um, I would say a good majority of our cases are self-neglect cases where an individual is not taking care of themselves, you know, for whatever reason. Um, and their job is to go and investigate, to confirm, yes, there's some neglect or abuse going on, and then to put in services to help the individual get through that situation. Lots of times it's putting in home care services, right? Because by putting in the home care services, we're alleviating that level of neglect. Um, we obviously have cases, as Anne was just referring to, that are more serious, you know, whether it's domestic violence or there's actual physical abuse. We see a lot of financial exploitation. Um, but the role of protective services is really to go in, investigate, say yes, this is actually happening, um, and work to mitigate that risk to the individual. Um, if you ever want to make a report, you know, everyone in the community has access to make a report if you're suspecting abuse and neglect of an individual. Uh, you can call us directly. Um, our phone number is five, and I have um, pamphlets up here as well, about us pamphlets that have this phone number, so don't feel like you have to write it down, but it's 508-584-1561. Um, call us and say, I'd like to make a protective service report, or I'm expect, you know, I'm suspecting something. Um, and then the state also has a hotline um, that you can find online. You know, I can't think of the 800 number off the top of my head, but you can call, you can uh, connect with the state as well to make a report. Um, and one other thing I'd like to mention that I forgot about earlier, we also do Meals on Wheels and have our nutrition program. So we run the Meals on Wheels in this area, um, so deliver meals to people on a daily basis, which also includes just a wellness check to make sure that they're okay, a high, you know, they get to see someone. Um, in our nutrition program, we have Healthy Living, which offers, um, you know, diabetes management courses or, you know, um, fall prevention courses, Tai Chi courses. So we offer that kind of under our nutrition umbrella. Um, yeah, other questions? Yes. It's kind of an odd one, but <clears throat> is there any place in the constellation of services that you know about where somebody could call and say, I need somebody to repair a shelf in my house and I don't know <laughs> what to do. So is there an EMG's list for? Yeah, so yeah, so that's a great question. Um, we have a, so we work with contracted providers, which means we vetted them and we they've gone through our contracted process and they're contracted with us and we say we trust them. That includes the home health aid people, but it also includes a couple of handyman heroes. I don't know if anyone heard of him. He's one of our contracted people um, that can come out. So you don't have to be an OCES consumer. We call it. You don't have to be enrolled in a care plan to just call and say, "Hey, I need this." Oftentimes, we'll give you the resources, and then if you say, and also I can't afford this, we have grant money that we help. It's called special funds, and we help people in the community all the time pay for all sorts of things. The story I always tell is we helped a woman once cremate her cat. Like, that's the 
level of <laughs> that's the level of things we can we get creative and we can find ways to really help people in a way that's needed. So we have grant money that we access all the time to help people pay for things in the community. Yeah. Other questions? So I left a couple of just a Dallas um, pamphlets up here. Our adult family care program, there's a, only a couple of our 50th anniversary notebooks. We're running low, so I only brought a few, but so first come, first serve on those. But feel free to take what you need, and you know, always feel free to call. You can ask me directly if you ever needed to speak to someone. One more time with the phone number. Yep, 508-584-1561. My name's Elisa, and I'm the Chief Programs Officer, so all those programs I just talked about, I oversee indirectly. So you can always contact me, and I can connect you to the right person.